properly. They, uh, the text they are using in school are, I don't know how it is English, but it's selkokieli. Maybe somebody can help. So it's kind of a, a modified language, no uh, uh, difficult structures, no difficult words. And if the people who, uh, and, and these are the people that they won't be able to read long texts anymore. And they are the people that will come to the upper secondary education. They come to vocational education, or they go to the general education, then they will go to the working life. They are the ones that will be the engineers, nurses, doctors, teachers of the future. And how will the upper secondary education, tertiary education change with the people who don't know how to read properly? And these are the big questions that how we are using the technologies in education that uh, do we see that what can come ahead and how can we uh, uh, avoid the things uh, that we don't wish to happen. This is something that I would like you also to think about when we discuss that what we can achieve through the use of these technologies. There's a huge debate in most of the uh, OECD countries about the use of uh, devices in school. Huge debate. I had a chance to discuss with uh, Director Andres Schleyer from the OECD about this issue and a couple of weeks ago when he was visiting Finland. And uh, he mentioned, mentioned that we are very, we are still in most of the countries, the first thing is that what is happening in the field of education that we are all so worried about the aftermath of the COVID and the consequences of the COVID. But part of that was the isolation that was caused by the restrictions in different countries. And the other part is that that was the time when finally the devices took over of social connections. And this is something, the isolation uh, is no more there. We can meet people like we are meeting here. We can greet people, uh, we can get around, but the devices are still here and very much of the communication that we are doing is happening through devices. I'm no different from you. And, 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 and the question is then that um, if we take these technological leaps in education, which we will take, of course, that uh, do we have the wisdom and courage to see that what are the effects that we would like to see and what are the things that we should be avoiding and how we keep, uh, sh make sure that the education is still about people and people meeting and people connecting because that's where the innovations happen. It's not just uh, technologies that will provide us uh, different services. It's about teachers, it's about uh, our students, whatever age they are meeting, and that will create something that will deliver to the businesses. That's, these are the words that I would like to say to start the, um, this event from my side, uh, the Ministry of Education and the uh, Opetus Hallitus, our national agency of education. Uh, we are uh, preparing also recommendations for the education sector on how to use the artificial intelligence. Hopefully there will be something in the turn of the 2025 that can be, can be publicized then. And I hope that it will be something that will also benefit our vocational education providers. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. There's a lot of, lot of to think about. We are actually facing big, big questions. In 
or already today and, and also, also in the future. So, uh, following our opening, we'll connect remotely with Juha Toipol Kiviniemi, Senior Advisor at Salto, did it further. And now I have the honor to, to ask um, Maria Ekruth, the Executive Director, Skills Finland, and also Mr. Heikki Helve, the Municip Munis Municipal Director, Savo Consortium of Education to the States. And uh, they will talk about the AI impact to Finnish skills competition and also vocational education. So please. Thank you. So I'm Maria Ekrut, CEO of Skills Finland. And I'm going to tell about this Taitea event, where we are, about how it can inspire and boost AI skills. And with me, Heikki Helve, whose organization is uh, building this year Taitea event, is going to tell more about the AI's impact to the education. Skills Finland's mission is to promote the quality of attractiveness of wet education through skills competitions and the quality of wet, uh, together with Finnish Vocational Education Network. And this strategy picture shows the environment and network with whom we do this work. There are experts in vocational education and universities of applied science and representatives of working life. And then also, you see this airplane, it means our international networks such as World Skills, Euroskills, and Abilympics. And as Petri Lempinen said, when people meet and are communicating, innovations happen. And this Taitaya event is something where innovation happens. We connect, we need, we see all the vet professionals here, and we can change ideas and uh, building the future. So this Taitea event and network is a strong platform for spreading new types of expertise. And Taitea competition can introduce AI challenges to expose students to real world AI problems and technologies. As said before, we are just in the beginning, but here is a great platform to increase the uh, quality of wet and, uh, and the new skills for the students and teachers. A couple of words about this Taitaya event, why its impact is so good. It's uh, the largest single event in Finland for the wet competitions and for all these networks. There are 50 different voc vocational fields and skills that students are competing and caters tens of thousands of visitors. Like here in Kuopio, we are expecting 50,000 visitors. And uh, Skills Finland has the, owns the concept of this Taitaya, and, uh, and the rights to organize Taitaya are granted to a different vet providers each year, and different part of Finland. And here are some figures. Competitors and teachers uh, comes from 60 different vocational institutions uh, who are participating in events. Uh, there are around 900 teachers and 400 company representatives who are building their skills or working as judges or has impact in some other way for these competitions. And Together, they are building their skills and tasks in the way that they are similar to working life. Um, when this all knowledge and set of skills is combined, everybody learns and develops. And in this environment, it is also possible to promote AI skills. And here are some figures about the impact of competitions, why we believe that this is a strong way. As you can see that 88% of the competitors says that they have experienced an increase in their professional skills. Whatever the skills are, we want to have an impact, like green shifting or AI 
here is the tool where we can do that. And about the teachers, 93% see Taitea as important tool when developing teaching. And 87% uh, feels that Taitea develops their vocational field. And 80% gain new ideas for teaching. And this is one thing what the teachers need when the new kind of skills as AI uh, comes. And most important is what they gain is that 84% share with others what they have learned in these competitions. Of course, all the students they are teaching, but also the colleagues and the whole network. Digitalization and AI are rapidly, rapidly changing working life. In terms of AI, we are only taking the first steps in skill competitions as in vet education, generally, as heard earlier. So we should closely monitor how this development is reflected in the national qualification requirements, which are kind of occupational standards the Finnish National Board of Education decide, because competition skills should be based on this. And how does education respond to what is happening with AI and skills need? and how AI is chasing the working life. So we need to respond to these changes and adjust AI's role in competition accordingly to that. And artificial intelligence has been included in Taitea competition this year in a few different ways. Uh, here in Kuopio, they have elevated experiential learning to a new level by offering a fantastic simulator world with 16 simulators for visitors to try on. And most of these simulators are from the vet education providers who has borrowed their simulators here. So if you have time, please go and try this. It's really, really nice experience. And this I used for the teaching. And the other way here is the, that well-known and award-winning digital artist Antti Karppinen is the photographer behind the branded image of Sakkos Taitea event. If you have seen this uh, Taitea newsletter, this photo is kind of made with uh, artificial intelligence. The Sakke students have been the photo models of the images, and they also brought own images, photos from home. And by combining these, brand photos have been created using AI programs. There are a few others as well. This is the one picture as well. And they are not exactly as any students, but they are look alike, and the AI has created the backgrounds also. But anyway, Taitea 2024 values the work of traditional photographers while also being open to embracing technology, the opportunities in present. Photographers are still needed and valued for their skills. And here in Taitea competition, the use of AI is also tested in one competition task. And this is first time digital artists uh, Antti Karpinen is also involved there in a media design competition task where competitors use AI in part of the task. Actually, the task is today and Antti Karpinen is in the skill area the whole day. So if you like to go and meet him or see what is happening there. So it's uh, skill two, 203 in Kuopio Hall. So you can go and visit. But Antti Karpinen has used the AI in a so creative way that he is well known in other parts of the world as well. In summary, AI is currently a widely discussed topic and is already a tool of today. But most importantly, it's a tool of the future. Overall, Taitea competition can serve as a breeding ground for innovation and excellence in AI. 
bringing together various stakeholders to collaborate and push the boundaries of what is possible in the field. And of course, we have to understand the risk, but we can also see the possibilities. And this ultimately leads to a higher quality of vocational education and training in AI. And now, Heike can continue. So oh, thank you and good morning, everyone. I'm wondering why I did my short presentation without AI. I noticed this this morning and I was a little disappointed because that would be very easy to make a questions, make presentations, what uh, AI should be in the future, in the vocational education and have the results, five minutes, be very efficient and be proud that that's my idea, wow. And now, now I'm, I'm very pleased and happy that I have the solution to everyone. But no, I haven't done it. So if this short presentation seems to be very boring or not offering the answers to everyone, please, it's because of me. I'm human. But I wanted to shortly uh, give the overview impression what we are, what the Savo Vocational Education Organization is, and what we think about the AE in the future. So we offer vocational education in whole county, and we have uh, Varkaus Upper Secondary School as well part of our, our organization. And we are owned by 16 cities and municipalities. In the next slide, uh, we have done a new strategy and we have three aims. And the first and important is that we wanted to save society. No more or less. Save the society. One teacher said once that, yes, I think that what we are doing to save the whole society is that I'm doing that student by student. And that's a very clever answer and the opinion how they figure out what is the way how we save the society is that we help all our students to go forward what they are studying, what they are doing, what they are planning, what are their dreams and find the way to find a job. Then we have the benefits for the personal life and for the businesses and public sector and third vocational sector, uh, different sectors, non-profit organizations and so on. So we inspire our students to go forward in their life and, and studies. And of course, we will take care of our, our staff that they are skilled and, and they are willing to teach the future uh, labor force to, uh, to the companies and, and all the, all the employ, uh, places to work. So, some figures, how big we are. We have around 16,000 students per year. We have 800 people working in my organization. And one very much increase in figure is that we have more than 1,000 people studying in my organization uh, who comes abroad. So we are not only uh, an education organization for Finnish citizens or people born here in this area, so we have more and more people around the world. We have around 60 different countries where our students are coming nowadays. So we have to be very open-minded and find a way to teach them and, and um, adapt them to our, our society. And how we adapt to our society this is the key point for this um, uh, AI, because we have around 8,000 uh, yes, 8, practicing period in different companies per year. Average, it's 10 weeks. So you can count easily. 80,000 days we have as our students uh, studying in the, in the real working environment. So when we solve how to utilize uh, AI 
in our education, it will have the great and direct benefits to working life, to have a new skills to work. But how do we know what is needed in the, in, the, in the real work? We have to ask from the companies, public sectors, uh, non-profit organizations, and, and so on, what they need. But there is a little tricky thing. We don't know. They don't know. We exactly doesn't know how to utilize this new possibility to uh, have, have benefits from AI. So, one uh, point from this before I go to, to, um, to my questions is that many times people are thinking that uh, vocational education is for young people, age of 16 to 18. One third of the students in my organization are from 16 to 18 to 19 years old, and two thirds are adults. The oldest one is nowadays around 60, 61 years. A couple of years ago, there was a 91 years old man studying to home care because he wanted to uh, help her wife to survive at home and learn for that. So that's very human way and reason to come to study. But we have we have adults, so we have large range of ages in in my my schools. But what are the questions? We are part of the society where it belongs in this campus area. There's the University of Eastern Finland, there's the Applied University of Savonia, there's the National Research Centers, there's the uh, high-tech companies in this Novapolis, more than 200 of them, and then we are there. I think that this, this question what we are solving and facing all the time, we all are in the same position. So why to separate those questions uh, that you, this, is, this slide is, is for, for the vocational education, this, this point is for the university. So this is the whole question to every uh, participant if in, in, in education organizations. And that's a good place to be here and be the open-minded to all, all level of education. Because the next slides I figure out some questions. So what this is for us? And, and uh, I think that how to use it? We all have in our computers this software that we can use the AI uh, in, in, in our daily work, but how good we are in it? I'm not very good. I'm anxious to know it. But I don't know. I, I know that I, I'm not the best one. I can teach it. But I can, I can have a benefit of it. it. But how to develop the processes for that, how to educate our staff, and what they should learn and what they should teach about it. Not only make the pictures, not only uh, make a summary of the, of the, of the ministry's uh, papers or, or so on. There should be some more intelligent way to utilize AI than we think just now. And my neighbor and good friend Mikko will give this answer for that question. You promised two days ago when, when I was eating a hamburger there and he was repairing the fence. That's, I think that, that's a good deal for me. So the fence is between our house. So I, I was eating and he was repairing the fence. Uh, and I have a beer. He's not. So, but that's that's our our private things. Don't tell to anyone it. So, but we need this dialogue. What is needed for the education organization, and what is needed in, in the in the in the companies, and what what is the level what we should teach to our students, but. There is no any any orders or not not uh, qualifications uh, points what we have to achieve. No, we don't have. And is the need same in public side and private side? Is there some legislation of of knowledge what is free to have and what is the classified information and so on? 
how to utilize to uh, develop the better processes in, in some, may I say, routine works and so on. And how to invest on it. Not only the money, but the, our time. How much time we will use it. We don't know exactly. And then degrees. We have 107 degrees where we can write a diploma in, in my school. It's the most large range of diplomas in Finnish uh, vocational education organization. So we are the largest range. So should we start the traffic? Should we uh, CNC tuning, bakery, or, or business education, or what? Or all of them? That's the question what we, what we have to decide how to do. But we have to bear in our mind that there's still many things where the AI can't help. Have you noticed that there's the marvelous cakes in our, our taverna there? AI doesn't do that. It's the human who makes these cakes. And, and so what's the role of the EA in the future in education? I, have no, I do not have the answer for that. But it will be very, very important in different fields, different process, different way to uh, have knowledge and, and have the benefits of it. How the computers, how the robots, how the process goes, how to, how to manage things and so on, how to get the information. But still people are doing something by hands. So how to combine those things and how the company's needs. Miko is doing the great machines. So the machines have to build up by hands, more or less. There's of course the robots, but how to develop then how to how to do different parts of it. it it's the question what we what we have to talk about, and what kind of skills it's needed from our personal. We all have that in our computer, but it's more or less and uh, my. Ministry director doesn't hear that when I say mostly it's just for fun this time. But we have to learn to know what it is and what is the possible of it, and then we have to be courage to have a benefits of it. So that's my when you put the last slides. I'm his boss and he's doing a great job. Is it so? So that's my result, I don't know, but I'm anxious to develop the AI in my organization, in my education, uh, decrease in, in my, with my staff and with the companies and so on. But there's lots of uh, debating and uh, conversations and, and opinion changing before we are ready to have the great benefits of it. So, this is the presentations without these great things. That's my ideas. I'm the director. I should know everything. But as you can see, I'm human. I don't know everything, but I'm anxious to get to know. And that to think what is important to everyone at school. So, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Heikki <coughs> and Maria. And now the next speaker we have to move on is David Hoy, CEO of Tversky's International. He will tell us how will AI and digitalization impact on Tversky's competitions. And because David is flying right now, so he is participating via video. So please. Good morning, Finland. I am sorry that I cannot be there in person and I am sorry I cannot even join you virtually. But right now, while you are watching this video, I am in the air en route to Lyon, France for two weeks of development meetings for WorldSkills Lyon 2024. We look forward to welcoming as many of you as possible to the 47th WorldSkills competition in Lyon in September. 
Thank you for inviting me to join your seminar today, which is very well timed since WorldSkills International is now thinking seriously about the implications of artificial intelligence and digitalization for its own role. You may be familiar with this image or slide, which sets the WorldSkills competitions at the core of several interlinked themes. The WorldSkills competition is an ecosystem, a complex network of semi-autonomous parts. Each of these will be impacted upon by AI and digitalization, and this will affect their relationship with WorldSkills and its competitions. Here, in more detail, you see the purposes, partners, and topics that coalesce around world skills, bringing to us their expertise, wants, needs, and expectations, so that world skills must continuously create policies, procedures, and actions to optimize innovation and mitigate any downsides. Given this, with a focus on world skills competition specifically, Today, I shall briefly refer to standard setting, assessment and management, while stressing our lasting commitment to integrity and fairness in everything that we do. The World Skills Occupational Standards are up to 80% technical and occupational. Our approximately 60 skill competitions have been with us for between two and 70 years. Due to digitalization and automation, some of the occupations we represent, for example, bricklaying, may appear largely immune to AI, but may still be swept away or at least diminish in the future. Some, like plumbing and heating, have been, are, and will continue to be adaptable some will now appear because they are a growing part of the future. For example, UAVs or unmanned aerial vehicles, drones. <laughs> we need to create a strategy to manage and support each of these three types of occupations. And this challenge is with us now. To serve all our membership, we shall have to cope with a widening range of needs we know that, before and since the pandemic, low and middle income countries have struggled more than prosperous ones to provide their populations with even basic education and TVET, let alone access to the new technologies. Our twin goals of inclusion and excellence may struggle to coexist in harmony. We may need to depend more on regional competitions to help us cope positively with increasing diversity. Of course, developing countries may in some cases be better equipped than advanced ones to jump the intermediary stages and adopt new technology straight away. This slide from the World Economic Forum's Future of Jobs report that was published in 2023 shows the three key drivers of job change. Just as in Finland, the remaining 20% plus of our World Skills occupational standards are transversal, which gives us a meaning of increasing the responsibility, autonomy and complexities associated with each work role. This is to develop the human element of digitalization and to increase their influence on work. In the language of TVET, we must build transfer and progression more explicitly into the design of our occupational standards. This will tie into the teacher's and trainer's role where the intelligent and ethical inclusion of AI and digitalization needs to be encouraged as a tool an aid and a facilitator, but not as a means of compensating for missing knowledge, skills and competences on the part of the learner. AI, 
including generative AI and digitalization, each have a strong role to play in learning and formative assessment. It's in all our interests, including that of world schools, to educate young people and ourselves in the application and use of these new technologies. Critical thinking underpins all the transversal skills. The ability to think critical cannot be emphasized enough. Turning to assessment, where the role of the teacher is viewed very differently across our membership. Where teachers' judgments are highly trusted, as here in Finland, the pressure of coping with the complexity of assessment in the digital age and of instilling integrity in our learners may largely remain with teachers who will benefit world schools through their expertise, including their role as experts. Elsewhere, especially in more competitive societies, assessment design may be more centrally controlled and ultimately less developmental for our experts and competitors. This is a risk. Given the diversity of systems and cultures across our membership, world schools will need to update our policies, design and processes to deal with more complex assessment in future. We recognise that both AI and digitalisation favour advanced countries and so bring with them inequity and unfairness. They are largely in the hands of a few commercial giants and so far at least, regulation is lacking. In this global context, the world skills competition is what is sometimes called high stakes assessment. The stakes are high because the results matter to members and individuals in many important ways. Feedback, reputation, advancement, and sometimes even survival as organizations. Members differ greatly in these respects and associated with this, competitors and experts will feel either more or less pressure to win. Where pressure is extremely high, cheating may appear to be either a rational choice or the only choice participants can bear to think about. Our codes and rules and safeguards will need to be clear and firm, while balanced with equally strong demonstrations of understanding, integrity and fairness on our parts. If you're interested, I would recommend a recent webinar from the OECD called AI and Cheating in Education. How can we safeguard the integrity of exams? It is actually one of the best I've listened to recently. Whatever the challenge, World Schools continues to carry the responsibility for creating a level playing field and a secure environment for assessment. Practically, if we take the model that you see here, the lower three stages of achievement can each be assessed using AI and digitalization. These are to have content knowledge, to know how to apply that content knowledge, and to demonstrate or show how to apply that content knowledge in simulated work settings. The most important outcome to ensure value and relevance is that the person can do or perform their tasks to world-class levels in the real world, workforce readiness, and that's the highest level that we must stay at. For TVET, there is great benefit for formative assessment in each of these assessments. Rehearsals and simulations are common we have had these in our training restaurants and vehicle workshops for many years. Immersive simulations with generative AI will take this further and make an immense contribution to TVET at all ages, stages and levels. Machine learning is the only solution for lifelong learning at the required scale. For the initial TVET, 
that is vital for young people's successful passage to adulthood, we also foresee that it has a crucial support role to play, especially where the physical infrastructure is limited or outdated. Interestingly, the image we have used here was created by AI. We fed my speech for this slide into ChatGPT, and it gave us this image with this response. Here is the image representing the theme, the digital human, based on your provided text. The scene captures a futuristic classroom with students engaged in various immersive simulations using generative AI, blending physical and digital environments in Tibet. Amazing, that was the response, the text and the image. However, members travel across the globe for something very different at a World Skills competition. In addition to their own shared human and professional development, they come for what AI and digitalization will not be able to replace for the foreseeable future. This is live performance and its assessment. For as long as we can tell, our competitions will continue to focus on the uniquely human activity of young people doing their best in challenging situations that they have been well prepared for but cannot wholly anticipate or control. You may know the slogan that underpins our assessment at the World Schools competition. The medal winner must be the best practitioner at work. There are several ways of referring to this. Problem solving, conditional knowledge, nous, or one of my favorites, knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. While we shall increasingly expect our competitors and experts world to be digitalized, we shall continue to focus on the distinctly human capability of our competitors and the professionalism of our experts. We must also ensure that all our independent test project designers have the skills and guidance to design authentic assessments that test the defining qualities of skilled human beings. We shall need ever higher levels of expertise and integrity in our experts to put these into effect. And as a bottom line, we shall need to employ AI and digitalization to deter unfair practice. Finally, to sum up World Skills' direction of travel, our current and future biennial reviews of the skills competition portfolios must take account of AI, digitalization, and climate change sustainability. We need to strengthen our expectations and guidance on transversal skills to emphasize human performance and rely less on physical resources. We shall favor members' messaging and actions to encourage integrity and deter extreme incentives and disincentives. We must keep building our expertise in competition design for live performance assessment. We shall actively learn from members and our own use of AI and digitalization, while for the World Skills competition, our focus will be on human performance in the round as it happens. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening and thank you for this opportunity. So thank you, David. <coughs> and Travel Safe to Lyon, we will be there next autumn too. So the next speaker will be Mikko Moon, Vice President from the Normet. And he'll, he will be enlightening us how AI is reshaping industry standards. So let's give him a warm welcome. Thank you. Great to be here and thanks for the invitation. Here's the clicker. Okay. Yes. So, 
Yeah, I think this is right place to be at this moment. Like in Normet, we have now taken first step to how to utilize AI. And like many, many earlier, they say that uh, no idea how to use it. And we have some ideas, but we are just taking really the first steps. And this is exactly the thing what we should do together with the educational institutes. And Heikki summarized very well what are the roles of this of companies and educational institutions. So we have need to develop things and be more efficient and develop better products, improve quality and so on. And then educational institutes think that what the companies are really needing and, and that's the case. We have to do it together. We have the need and then educational institutions grow the new expert for, for the companies for the future to utilize the AI in the future. So that's the perfect match. So I have some, some ideas now collected, very practical examples. Normet Arandi's thoughts on AI, how we are utilizing that at the moment, I would say not so much, but we have a vision and how some examples what we can do in the future. And then together we can think that more further. So first, shortly about the Normet, what we do. So Normet is a global company, 62 years old. We have 50 locations in 30 countries. We have delivered more than 14,000 machines so far. We have 1,800 professional workings and turnover is about 500 million at the moment. And we do mining machines and services and construction chemicals for the underground use. What we, where we are aiming, we are aiming to building the safest place underground. So there's a lot of talk around the AI. And like I mentioned, we have now taken first small steps and this longer term strategy will follow. And in R&D, we are now studying fundamentals of AI and machine learning and how those could be utilized to make work more efficient, meaningful by removing humans from rep repetitive work. And I put this under two headers, so internal processes, what we do inside the company and the company overall, and then how customers utilize our machines and what, how we can utilize AI in our machines. We can see a lot of opportunities and risks which limit the use of some commercial applications at the moment. There is some, some opportunities and risks mentioned, so if we start from the risk side, so security is one, one thing, so we have a lot of sensitive data in company and we, we want to keep those inside the firewalls. So, so whatever application we use, how, how we can be sure that, that all the information stays in, inside the company. Accuracy, what this AI give us, the results, can we be sure that that's 100% right? How much this environment cost us when we start to use these applications and the complexity of the systems? But the opportunities for sure, the efficiency, quality, accessibility and finability. Company like Normet, we have massive amount of data everywhere in different operations. It's very time consuming to find the relevant data. And can we be sure that that human who is finding the data, find the right data? That's, that's one example I think the AI can help us a lot. And what we do, we promote cooperation with educational institutes, like I mentioned earlier. This is really something we, we have to do together. So how we utilize AI today? So like I mentioned, not so much. We have co-pilot installed in our computers. Each individual may use ChatGPT, but that's not the official tool in our company yet. There are some practical example from service side we are doing kind of first, first studies. So we are now collecting data from our machines which are operating in different parts of the world. There is a lot of data coming from the machine, how engine is running, how operator use the process and so on. And now we try to find the ways how we can utilize AI to kind of slice and dice that information and help, help our customers to be more productive, help us to uh, find the possible errors beforehand and so on. So that's, that's one area where we can 
I we think we can utilize AI and we are now doing the first trials. Yeah, so then some practical examples we think that we, where we AI can be utilized in the future. And one, one is this kind of chatbot. So that should be, can be perhaps utilized in many areas, but one area is this uh, regional standards and regulation. So our machines are delivered all over the world and, and different parts of the world, there is a lot of different standards and regulations, what our machines need to fulfill. And engineers have to then figure out that what I have to take in account when I design this new thing. What Australians need, what customers in Latin America needs, and so on. There is a massive amount of different documents where we have to find the relevant information. And this kind of chatbot might be a good solution to find the relevant information from those standards. For example, what's the maximum height of the first step? That varies in different parts of the world. Uh, then one example, actually we have one thesis working on going at the moment, is creating instruction manuals or part of instruction manuals by utilizing structural documentation, documentation and how AI can help there. That's connected to our machine structure and whatever customer select to the machine, that can be connected to documentation and then AI can help us to kind of generate this operator manual based on the selections. One chatbot example is when operator use the machine and there is an issue now, normal way is that operator go to look the manual and try to find the, find the answer, but perhaps operator can type in the question and this chatbot can kind of find the information from the manuals and bring this possible solution to the operator. Some symbols and warning labels, small things in the machine, but there is standards how, how, how those should look and, and in different part of the world. And when we design new symbol, AI can help us to find the standard and perhaps do the design work for us. And then kind of basic thing to how to make different scenarios when we are making, for example, plans for the next year, what we do in the R&D what, type, what uh, is our resource situation and about how much loading there will be. And this AI can perhaps create as a different scenarios how we can, how we should define the schedules for the, for the next year, for example. Yeah, there was a few, few examples. Then in kind of actual engineering work, one possible area to utilize AI would be drawing inspections. So there is certain standards and instructions how, how different things should be should be in, in the drawings like welding, welding instructions and so on, tolerances. So at the moment we do this inspection manually. There is people who are checking the drawings and, and, and try to find if there's any issues, but perhaps AI can do this checking for us and give immediately the feedback, even on design phase already, that if there is errors, when, when engineers do the part. And one big issue at the moment is this massive database. We have 200,000 items in the, in the database, same amount of 3D models, technical documentation, so question how to find suitable part, part for, for some new, new application. It's much normal way that it's faster to design the new part than to find the suitable one. Well, perhaps this AI can help us to find suitable part based on the 3D shape of the item or, or technical description or technical data sheet to avoid to create duplicates. And, and if, if we engineer is making new parts and it's too close to existing one, it's give a warning and propose to use the current part instead that we are creating new ones. So this is very practical example and effect to many places, like level of warehouses in the future, how much we have items, what purchases have to buy and so on. So 
Very interesting example. Yeah, then something what our customer may ben benefit from this AI. So the picture is from our Revo charging boom. So it's fully automated charging charging boom. And, and there is now some already machine vision functions. So it recognizes the drilling holes and then do the charging independently. Operator is close to the machine and following, and of course, doing some, some moving the boom close to the holes. But perhaps we can take it more further and, and put this boom working fully auto, automatically and, and do the charging work automatically. That's one of the most dangerous uh, places in the mines, this, this, this work phase, when we are doing this charging. Roof is not, at that moment, supported perhaps optimal way, risk that rocks will fall down and so on. So that's, if we get the operator out from that working area and boom can be work more automatically, that would be great benefit for the customer and operator and, and this really help us to make this underground work work more safer. But it can be the future. That's the question we are thinking and I think you all are thinking now and I read some article AI fly F-16 fighter at the moment. So why not? It can not operate the mining machine one day. So now, now it's more perhaps kind of is assistant to the operator, but perhaps it can do more things individually in the future. And that this way we get these operators out from those dirty, dangerous places and let the machines do the work. That's not happen tomorrow or next year or even in two years, but we have to now take the step to achieve that situation. So there is a lot of opportunities, I would say. There was just a few very practical examples. And if you have any new ideas how we can utilize AI in Normet, please contact. I'm really open to new ideas and... and <laughs> Let's have some practical kind of training periods and, and, and thesis works and so on. I think sky is the limit in, in this. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mikko, very, very much. So uh, I'm sure your, your phone will ring many times in in the near future. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay, uh, it's time for a deeper expo exploration into artificial intelligence with our panel discussion titled Skills and Artificial Intelligence. We have Tarja Tolonen, Anulina Savolainen and also Pia Jokelainen here to discuss the multi-phased applications of AI in education and also an avatar, Digi Petri, consult from Sulava Oy. Let's delve into these in, in, uh, insightful topics with our panel. Okay, so we have Tarja, project manager and also special education teacher from Savo Vocational Colleagues, yes, welcome. Hello, thank you. Nice to meet you all. And then Anulina, uh, an expert multimodal pedagogy from Savonia University of Applied Sciences. Hello, welcome. thank you. And Pia, an educational uh, digital specialist from Luovi Vocational uh, College. Hello, nice to meet you all. And uh, also, um, for the, maybe for the first time in Finland at least, we have this avatar, Digi Petri, consult 
from Sulava Oy. Uh, and, and you may see uh, his uh, counselor. It's a pleasure having you all here. <laughs> okay, good, thanks. <laughs> Uh, his consult is waving o o over there, so, so um, they are connected, and, and let's see how this goes. All right. Um, good to have you here. And the first question is services to be used. How do I choose the right ones from countless artificial intelligence services? Like Heikki already said, that, that he's not a professional, but, but very eager to know better and learn. And that's also my case. So, so how to find the right solutions and, and the uh, right, right ones, services from AI? Tarja, please. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Um, well, who's the expert? But, but maybe we have one among us, but I think it depends on the needs and like goals, what you have, what you want to get. Do you want to translate or do you want to get ideas or do you want to have new pictures? What do you want? Yeah, and also you have to figure out what are the features for the AI tool and um, what is the usability also and because there are maybe thousands or millions AI tools, so you, you just kind of have to figure out and maybe ask for recommendations from specialists or ask from um, AI, what tools should I use? Mm. Yes, actually the same, same like uh, Tarja and Pia said, and also the security mm. uh, side as well, like Mikko mentioned. Uh, earlier, it is also a very, very important aspect to consider that your data is secured. Yep. Uh, what about Diki Petri? What, what do you suggest? Your choice depends on your specific needs. Para seleccionar los servicios de adecuados de entre una multitud, primero debes identificar claramente tus necesidades y objetivos. Edema's ES beneficioso compara loss functions y capacidades de diferentes proveedores de servicios de IA. Los servicios de IA más populares en el mercado provienen de gigantes tecnológicos como Google, Amazon, IBM y Microsoft, cada uno de los quails tiene sus propias fortalezas. La lección final debe ser la que mejor se ajusta tus necesidades. This is actually uh, an answer what what Pia suggested that, that to ask from AI. <laughs> okay, let's continue. Uh, in what different ways can artificial intelligence be used, especially if we are thinking about teaching and and uh, also um, in in the perspective perspective of of special education. Well. <clears throat> of course, in, it can be used very flexibly, at least still nowadays, when many of us still don't know how to use it, uh, very be beneficially. But it can be used in the individual level or organization level. And now many people are still starting to use uh, AI, and they many people, many from us uh, need help for prompting, just to get ideas how to prompt, but at the same time we have to think of it in how to use it more widely, and uh, maybe organizations are making um, AI strategies to, to make a plan how and where and who and in what way we can benefit from AI in more wider perspective. Uh, from the teaching and education point of view, uh, teachers can use it to get ideas uh, what kind of assignments they could create uh, or to create assignments or, or ask questions from AI. Uh, what kind of treatment do I give to heart attack uh, patients and, and assess the answer? And the teacher can give students an, an assignment that ask this prompt from AI and evaluate, is the answer correct? Mm. 
So the students need to know the facts so that they can assess what AI is, is giving you and, and to support the student's critical thinking mm. because what AI gives you is not always the truth. Mm. And also, like, my students are, like uh, we told you earlier that I work with the special education students, they, some of them have used AI as a friend, so they are just discussing, like, with a friend, with AI, because it's quite easy, you can use Finnish language and just ask anything, what should I do this evening, and AI gives you ideas that, okay, go for a walk or or like listen to the music it gives millions of ideas and then like i don't know if you heard like in the opening of this taiteya meeting there was this song it was made by one of my students because he was working in the taiteya office so he wanted to thank petteri and and everyone there working in office so he wrote us wrote words for the song and then uh, suno app made the song for the competition so i thought it was lovely mm. it it was really lovely and it is i i hope you, you have a possibility if you haven't heard it yet yeah you you have to have to do it later so uh what about diki petri uh in what different ways can artificial intelligence be used in your mind? AI offers diverse possibilities in education. Here are a few examples. One. Two. Three. Four. Five, online learning. AI can facilitate digital learning platforms and virtual classrooms, making education more accessible to those who cannot attend traditional classrooms. Please remember, while AI can greatly enhance education, it's important to keep a human touch in education to ensure emotional and social learning. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So, so uh, let's keep this um, human-centered way of teaching and, and learning in um, also attached to the to the uh, we, we, with the AI. Okay, let's go go further. Um, how can machine learning and language models be used in different ways? We already heard a little bit uh, about that during the presentations, but do you have, have ideas to this? Well, um, machine learning, uh, AI could uh, predict like, my, what might happen in the future. For, for example, uh, for, forecast, it can calculate what kind of weather you might have tomorrow based on the data uh, or what certain uh, users may behave in this kind of situations that people have behaved before, mm. based on the data. Okay. And also, like she said, mentioned the word predict. It can make predictions of large amount of data. For example, in, in uh, our college or any college or in school use, like um, have the student data and maybe predict uh, the drop dropping out risks and so we can uh, earlier on influence and uh, help the student okay and maybe in the there can be conversations in the learning platforms and it can summarize the conversations and it could be even in different languages and make summarization of those conversations so it's Handy. Mm. Yes, thank you. Has Diki Petri something to say, say to this question? Machine learning and language models have various applications. Here are a few examples. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven. Spam filtering. Email services use machine learning to learn to differentiate between regular messages and unwanted spam. These are just a few examples. The applications of machine learning and language models are broad and growing as technology advances. Okay, thank you, Ricky Petri. There are some, some answers and some suggestions, uh, but they are quite small, the text, but maybe um, afterwards we can uh, somehow go deeper, deeper to those uh, answers and, and, and ideas. All right. Mm, what about students? Uh, we already talked about a little bit about the teacher, teacher's view, but uh, how can students take advantage by using AI? And what does it mean for special needs students? Mm, uh, the students in practice, the students can ask uh, the AI to summarize or make easy to read material or make this material more, more accessible or uh, sometimes I have also helped them to uh, set, make the settings so that the answers are always summarized or you get only answers in, in five sentences or you can have the uh, answers in your own preferred language. Mm. So anything that helps the student to make us get a glimpse or just to have a quick look at the answers makes it easier for people in special education mostly. Okay. And from the student's point of view, as students can give, for example, chat GPT a role from the prompt that you are uh, my friend who is asking me questions about this topic that the student is preparing for the test or wants to the chat GPT to ask questions about this certain topic that you are asking me questions and I need to answer to you and you will evaluate are my answers correct so that the AI is asking the questions not the student. Mm. This is a good point <laughs> and makes mothers and fathers live much easier so the, the computer can ma ma make this. Okay, what about Tarja? <laughs> and maybe, maybe also like as a student or as a teacher, clarify your thoughts like this is my thought, can you make it more understandable and I don't understand what is this part. And also for the students with the um, vision problems that can, can you tell me what is in this picture and explain mm. that too. Mm. Okay. And I would like to also give an example in uh, Luovi Vocational College. We are now having a two week contest of, um, and the contest is called in Finnish something like um, an intelligent or not at all intelligent prompt and uh, all the staff and students can take part in it and it started last week and now they have given lots and lots of answers. They can use any public AI tool and in their, in their answer they have to tell which tool, which AI tool that did they use, what was the prompt and what was the answer. And um, our students have asked a lot of things like uh, the business student asked the AI why doesn't the Finnish people know how to sell well <laughs> okay. and the answer was about how we the Finns are and uh, many of the teachers they have asked how to motivate uh, students in certain they are very specific what they have asked and there has been also because uh, some of the staff don't work with the students instead they work with uh, in an office with computers one of the staff member asked uh, ai and the summer is coming and there's the heat heat waves waves and how do i 
how do I um, come up with all the sweat in the office? <laughs> so there has been really nice answers. <laughs> Good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Diki Petri, what, what, what is your, your answer to the question? AI can be a powerful tool for students. Here's how. One. Two. Learning tools. AI technologies can help students grasp complex concepts in subjects like math, science, or language studies by providing interactive study tools. Homework help. Applications powered by AI can assist students in doing homework by providing solutions to problems and explanations to concepts. For special needs students, one, two, three. Custom teaching methodologies. AI can improve education for special needs students by personalizing teaching methodologies according to their needs and enable them to learn in a more engaging and comfortable environment. Please note that while AI can effectively supplement education, it should not replace human educators. The empathy, understanding, and judgment of human teachers are crucial, especially when it comes to students with special needs. Thank you, Diki Petri. All right, uh, let, let's go further. Um, some important considerations how I should use the artificial intelligence. About, you already mentioned about the data security. Uh, wh what else things to consider? What is actually allowed to do? And, and how to know what is not allowed to do? Do you have any short answers to this? Well, for example, you're not allowed to to write any personal information about yourself mm -hmm. or about your friend or about your, your co-workers or anybody else. That is unethical. And, um, and also to use AI to harm somebody or someone is also unethical and forbidden. I think most of the schools have already instructions how to use AI and also the Finnish uh, uh, um, education, um, the OP, OP, what is it, the Finnish, uh, help me out. <laughs> Uh, anyways, they have made the national instructions how to use AI to also, and uh, in our college we uh, support and encourage people to use AI, but at the same time we teach them the, these things what Anulin already mentioned, that don't, don't write any personal data, or, but mostly we need now encouraging how to use the tools. Okay. And maybe just being transparent where you have been using it and how. Yeah, yeah we are all learning. Yeah. <laughs> learning by doing. Um, then about how, how the artificial intelligence can be used in cooperation between companies and education. Mikko already had some ideas and, and uh, somehow underlined many times that, that it's necessary to collaborate, but what do you think in, in your perspective, uh, why it's important and, and how it should be somehow encouraged, the collaboration between companies and also the uh, education organizations? Well, for, for example, um, we could ask the AI to predict what kind of skills do we need in the future working life that we should be teaching our students so that they, their, their skills are matched with their requirements in the working life. Mm. And some of the uh, students with special needs, they only work uh, maybe two hours or four, four hours a day. So maybe in some companies we can find uh, certain kind of jobs for them using AI in finding them. 
And I guess I, I could help with the language barriers as well. So if there is people from different cultures, it would be easier to work together with the help of AI. Mm. Yes. In my perspective, since, since I'm working with, with many uh, immigrants nowadays over here, and uh, w when they go for uh, internships to, to companies, um, the, the uh, people over there are many cases uh, worried about the uh, safety instructions, safety issues in, in, in the company. So I guess in, in the language, uh, places and in the safety belt places, uh, this could be also very, very good, good way to go further. Okay, uh, Diki Petri, what's your suggestions to, to collaboration between companies and, and uh, education? Okay, so no collaboration this time. <laughs> let's see, let's go further. Actually, this is my final questions to you. I would like all of you to uh, give a vision. What is the future of artificial intelligence in vocational training? Well, I think with the help of AI, we could maybe do a little bit, even a little bit more personal learning, learning paths and and it would help the personal learning. Yes. And uh, maybe AI could in include more automatically uh, mm, points, points with uh, sustainable development. So we, it, we, it would be everywhere uh, taking care of our environment. And then also now uh, the anal learning analytics is, I think it's more about the analytics of using time and time management instead of really learning analytics. So I hope in the near future uh, AI can help us with the really to analyze learning. Mm. So that would be very important. Thank you. Uh, from the teacher's point of view, uh, lesson planning, curriculum planning to help with with that work, um, uh, the assessment and evaluation to help with that, the teachers, and then from the students' point of view, I agree with with Dar with Daria that this um, that the learning platform will adapt to the st students' learning outcomes. Like you got this much points, now you should go through this material again, okay. or you got this much points, you can now proceed to yes. this material. So it adapts to the students' uh, skills. Yes, thank you very much. Really, really uh, somehow uh, interesting and important points. Uh, so Diki Petri, your final word about vision about the artificial, artificial intelligence. The future of artificial intelligence, AI, and vocational training is very promising. AI technology continues to evolve at a rapid pace, and its potential application in vocational training is significant. For starters, AI-powered platforms can customize learning paths for each individual, reinforcing areas they struggle with and skipping over the information they've already mastered. For industries that involve high-risk training scenarios, like aviation, construction, and medicine, AI can be combined with virtual reality, VR, to create immersive, realistic simulations, allowing trainees to gain practical experience without actually being in danger. Furthermore, AI analytics can track the learner's progress and provide detailed feedback, helping both the trainee and instructor understand where enhancements are needed. So. AI in vocational training holds the potential not only to dramatically improve the quality of education, but also to make it more accessible and efficient. As vocational sectors continue to embrace digital transformation, the incorporation of AI will be critical in shaping the future of vocational training. Thank you very much, Diki Petri, and thank you, Tarja, thank you, Pia, and thank you, Anulina. Uh,
uh, as we heard, so, so the lifelong learning for us all is the way of, of um, uh, continuing. And as we heard that the knowing what to do when you don't know what to do may be the, the <laughs> somehow the aim, aim uh, of, for the future and aim for us. Uh, thank you. Is there anything from the audience that you would like to ask from, from, from the speakers or from the panelists right now? We still have like a couple of minutes to go. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Seija Katajisto from Salpaus Further Education. What I think now is that we should learn together with the students. It's not that the teachers know how. We have many students who know better. And that cooperation is one key uh, way of action right now. Thank you. I also wanted to say the same thing earlier in these questions, that the collaboration between the students and learning uh, the, also with them at the same time as we are using together with them the AI, then we also can learn at the same time um, uh, the, sa the digital reading skills and so on. And I think at this point, I still wanted to say that at this point it's very essential to be very courageous in, in using AI tools and at the same time understand the incompleteness in all of us, that we cannot handle all these tools. I think that's the best way to wrap it up. So. Thanks a lot, all the speakers. We have a small gift to you. It's Kala and Kukko, <laughs> Peace and Rooster, or something like that in English. So, so thanks a lot for participating in this seminar. And now, of course, the, we will continue with the best session of the day, the networking lunch. <laughs> And there will be some guides to get there to Parviravintola. And then 1 p.m. there will be a uh, guided tour to Taitea event if you want to participate. It. Uh, and I will take you from this guided tour from the Parviravintola. So have a nice day, all the participants and speakers and all the online also. So have a nice day and we see you at guided tour.